Lesson 3 is about missing numbers in addition and missing numbers in subtraction, or as I've titled it, find the missing number. Now, if you remember, at the end of Lesson 1, we talked about fact families, and we talked about addition and subtraction fact families. And remember, we'd have like three numbers that we would rearrange to make two addition facts and two subtraction facts. And basically, that's what you're going to be doing in this lesson. Just you'll see it in a little bit different way. And this lesson will help you understand how addition and subtraction are related. I think the best way to do this lesson is to just do a lot of problems. So let's go ahead and start working some problems. Let's try this one. A, that's our missing number. We'll just call it number A. A plus 13. Remember, write, write this down. Anytime we're doing anything on the board, you should write it down with me. A plus 13 equals 26. So we have our result or our sum, and we have one of the add-ends, but we don't know what the other add-end is. And so let's think about our fact families. How could we figure out what A was? A plus 13 has to equal 26. Well, maybe you can do this problem in your head, and you know that 13 plus 13 equals 26. That's one way to figure out that problem. But if you don't understand it, you would have to think, well, if I subtracted 13 from 26, that would give me A. And so let's do that. 26 minus 13. 6 minus 3 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. And so A... Let's just write it over here. A equals 13. That's our answer. And see, look, we have a fact family here, don't we? We have that A, that's 13. We added it to that 13, and we got 26. And then look at our subtraction problem. 26 minus 13 equals 13. We have three numbers there that we can arrange to form an addition fact, and then we also arrange them to form a subtraction fact. Let's use some of the definitions for the parts of addition and subtraction. The sum, when you subtract an add end from the sum, you can figure out what the other add end is equal to. Another way to think about that is you can take the difference between the add end or between the sum and the add end and figure out what the missing add end is. Let's try another one. It's always a good idea after we've done one practice problem for you to pause the CD and try to do the next one on your own and then you can fast forward to the answer and, and see if you got it right or not. 28 plus B equals 42. So let's do this one. We have our sum. Let's subtract the other add end from that. And we should be able to figure out what B is. Tw 2 from 8. We can't do that, so we need to do 12. 12 minus 8 is 4. And we make that a 3 there. 3 minus 2 is 1. And so B equals 14. And we can just think about that. 14 plus 28, does that equal 42? Yes, that does equal 42, so that is correct. Now let's try one with subtraction. x minus 20 equals 40. Let's just think about this. What minus 20 would equal 40? Maybe you can do that one in your head. 60 minus 20 is equal to 40. But how could we figure that out making a fact family out of this, an addition fact family? 60 plus, actually that should be 40, right? 40 plus 20 is equal to 60. I got a little ahead of myself there. 40 plus 20 equals 60. And so that's our answer. X equals 60. So you're starting to see how this works. When we have an addition problem and we want to figure out what one of the add-ends is, we do subtraction to figure it out. If we have a subtraction problem and we want to figure out what one of the problems is or one of the parts of that subtraction problem, we do addition to figure that out. If we know what the difference is, 
like we were given the difference there, the difference between the two numbers, x and 20, was equal to 40. So we were just able to add 40 and 20 to get 60. Now let's try this one. 15 minus y equals 9. Now one thing you can always do on these is try to do it in your head. 15 minus what equals 9? Well, 15 minus 6 equals 9. If you don't understand that, you can try to do a fact family. Now this problem is different than the previous problem though. We can't just say 15 plus 9 equals y. That's not going to work. I mean just think about that. 15 plus 9, that would equal 24. 15 minus 24 is not equal to positive 9. you have to do another subtraction problem. 15 minus 9 is equal to 6. That's your answer. And just think about that. Does that make sense? Should y equal 6? Just think about that. 15 minus 6, that does equal positive 9. So that is correct. So just be careful on those subtraction ones. The when you're doing a subtraction problem, you have the problems or the numbers lined up vertically. The bottom number is always the smaller one, right? So when the missing number is the smaller number, you have to do addition, add the difference to the other number that's given. I'm sorry, I meant subtract the difference. Like in that one, we subtracted 9 from 15 and we got 6. If the number that's unknown like in C, is the larger number, like we saw for X there, add the difference to the other number that they gave you. 40 plus 20 is 60. So be careful on those subtraction problems when you're trying to find the missing number. Let's do a few more of these. Look at this problem. Z plus 13 equals 30. We've already done some problems with addition. It's just that they were written vertically. This one's written horizontally. If you want to rewrite it vertically, you can. So you could just write Z 13 and 30. And this problem, we could do a subtraction 30 minus 13. 10 minus 3 is 7. 2 minus 1 is 1. And so Z is equal to 17. The best way to do these problems is to do them in your head because usually they're pretty simple addition or subtraction problems. If you have to write it out, then do that. I'm, I'm writing it out just in case you don't understand how to get that answer. But it would be best if you could do these problems in your head. Let's do another one. Let's try 18 plus F equals 32. And again, like on this one, you can say, well, 18 plus what equals 32? Well, 18 plus 14 is 32. Or you could do subtraction of the two numbers that they gave you. 32 minus 18. 12 minus 8 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. And so F is equal to 14. Look at this problem. M minus 23 equals 43. Let's just think about that. We're trying to find the larger number of that difference. So if we added the 23 and the 43 together, we could figure out what M is. So let's just do that. Rewrite those vertically. 23 and 43. 3 plus 3 is 6. 4 plus 2 is 6. And so that's our answer. M is equal to 66. You can always check your work on these. Does 66 minus 23 equal 43? Yes, that does. Look at this problem, H. 56 minus Q equals 29. Remember, when you have several problems that are similar, you should pause the CD, see if you can work it yourself, and then fast forward to the answer and see if you got it correct. 56 minus Q is 29, so you're trying to find what to subtract from 56 to get 29. 
Remember, in a subtraction problem, when you're given the smaller number, you should take the difference of 56 and the difference that they gave you, 29. So let's do that. 56 minus 29. 16 minus 9 is 7. 4 minus 2 is 2. So Q is equal to 27. Let's do one more problem, this problem I here. 2 plus n plus 4 minus 3 equals 8. Now that one's different than all the other ones. All the other ones we just had an unknown value, a missing number, plus or minus another number equals the result. Now this one we have three numbers on the left plus the n. So the best way to do these problems is to simplify that left side of the equal sign first. And what I mean by that is let's just get the n and then one other number there. And so why don't we do 4 minus 3. The difference between 4 and 3 would be 1. And so we can rewrite this problem. 2 plus n plus 1 is equal to 8. Now, remember in addition the order of the numbers doesn't matter. So we could say n plus 2 plus 1 equals 8. And then we have a 2 plus 1 there, so let's make that a 3. n plus 3 equals 8. And now we need to figure out what plus 3 equals 8. Now we could rewrite this problem and do our difference, but hopefully you know that one in your head. 5 plus 3 equals 8. So that means that n is equal to 5. And so that's our answer there. So did you see what we did there? We had three numbers on the left side of the equal sign to start with. We had the 2, the 4, and the 3. And we simplified down to just have one number, that 3 right there. We changed the order of the numbers. Remember, in addition, order does not matter. So that's why we were able to do that. And even then, we really didn't have to do that. We could have just seen that we had 2 plus n plus 1 and thought about that in our head. The order doesn't matter. So I can add the 2 and the 1 to make a 3. And then I have n plus 3 equals 8. And I can figure out that n equals 5. Okay, well that's all for lesson three.